welcome to the April Art and Soul Show at Epson. We hope you all had a good Easter and, and didn't have too much chocolate. First up to kick start the show is Morning Has Broken by Cat Stevens. <laughs> Debbie Cat Stevens with Morning Has Broken, you have me, John Joe, with a fantasy song called Saints and Sinners Both. A haven in a faraway place, free from toil and sin, a place with saints and sinners both gathered there within, find freedom. In this sacred place, a place where you have rights. Relax and settle, pray and hope goodbye to sleepless nights. Rise up, you did from dust, a mortal man of earth. Towns and cities, farm your two places of your birth. Once upon a shadow. Two times tell a lie To find yourself a grown-up Under nature's pale blue sky A haven in a faraway place Free from toil and sin A place with saints and sinners both Gathered there within Find freedom in this sacred place A place where you have rights Relax and settle, pray and hope goodbye to sleepless nights. To feel about yourself, 
Your spirit does not settle A battle fights within you now To be pure and gentle Muck and mire our spirits and light Which is the real you? A life you have to work it out And then find who is who A haven in a faraway place Free from toil and sin A place with saints and sinners both Gathered there within Find freedom in this sacred place A place where you have rights Relax and settle Pray and hope goodbye to sleepless nights Factoids of the month Did you know that the Titanic was 882 foot long Roughly three football pitches What colour are polar bears? Their skin is actually black and they are covered in hollow tubes that are used for thermal insulation. These reflect the light and make them seem white. Antarctica was once the home of penguins which were just over two metres tall. That was 34 million years ago. Did you know that elephants eat around 16 to 18 hours a day, up to 10% of their body weight? Dogs sniff good smells with their left nostril. The biggest manufacturer of tyres in the world is not Goodyear, Dunlop or Michelin, it is actually Lego. John Wayne's real name is actually Marion Robert Morrison. Factoids of the month. So we make these shows in advance, but if all's going according to plan, in less than a week we shall be going out out. Here's a song I shall be singing. This is Sham 69 and Hurry Up Harry. Get out!
Hi, here's a nice jazzy summer song. It's by DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. It's called Summertime. Drums, please. The groove slightly transformed Just a bit of a break from the norm Just a little something to break the monotony Of all that hardcore dance That has gotten to be a little bit out of control It's cool to dance But what about a groove that soothes and moves romance Give me a soft, subtle mix And if it ain't broke, then don't try to fix it And think of the summers of the past Adjust the bass and let the alpine blast Pop in my CD and let me run around and put your car on cruise and lay back cause it's summertime. Dressing less and checking out the fellas to tell them who's best. Riding around in your Jeep or your Benzos, or in your Nissan sitting on Lorenzo's. Back in Philly, we be out in the park. A place called the Plateau is where everybody go. Guys out hunting and girls doing likewise. Honking at the honey in front of you with the light eyes. She turn around to see what you beeping at. It's like the summer's a natural aphrodisiac. And with a pen and pad, I compose this rhyme to hit you and to get you equipped for the summertime. Short set, yeah, I got on sneaks, but I need a new pair. Cause basketball courts in the summer got girls there. The temperature's about 88. Hop in the water plug, just for old time's sake. Break to your crib, change your clothes once more. Cause you're invited to a barbecue to start with four. Sitting with your friends as y'all reminisce about the days growing up and the first person you kiss. And as I think back, makes me wonder how the smell from a grill can spark up nostalgia. All the kids playing out front, little boys messing around with the girls playing double dutch. While the DJ spinning a tune as the old folks dance at your family reunion. Then six o'clock rolls around. You just finished wiping your car down. It's time to cruise, so you go to the summertime, hang out, it looks like a car show. Everybody come looking real fine, fresh from the barbershop, applies in the beauty salon. Every moment fronting and maxing, chilling in the car, they spend all day waxing. Leaning to the side, but you can't speed through two miles an hour, so everybody sees you. There's an air of love and of happiness, and this is the Fresh Prince's new definition of summer madness. Welcome to the April edition of Brian's Adventures in Faraway Lands. This month, I'm going to be talking about water, because that's something we take for granted in the West. Open a tap, we get water. Close the tap, it disappears again. What about the rest of the world? Well, the developed world can do the same thing, but if you're in the developing world, you don't have that luxury. Water tends to come from rivers ponds or wells and sometimes boreholes if you're lucky. Now the problem with water from rivers is that it's contaminated. Also it has parasites and so it's not a good idea to drink it. Yet children 
have to go down to the river every day, twice a day in fact, to collect water for their families. You can rectify this situation is by having wells or pumps. But even that causes problems. Unless you're sensible, you need to make sure that you're not installing a pump or a well downstream of a cemetery or the latrines, because it's obvious you're going to get contamination and sickness. In my adventures, I've had to contend with all sorts of strange things. For instance, when I was in New Guinea, water was provided to my house in a big barrel, and they used to fill it up from the river. Now that water I would use to have a shower. Showers were great, it was a bucket with a rose on it, and it was hung in the shower room. When you opened the rose, you got a shower, which was great. The water for drinking came off the roof. You don't know what was in the water, because things landed on the roof, didn't it? Being in New Guinea was an interesting experience. It was my first experience of that sort of situation. But moving on, there are some very odd things that happen. When I was in Sudan, for instance, water there was the same. We had ladies from the village carry water up to the station where we were working and they filled up a big tank. That water was used for drinking and for washing. Same problem. You didn't have a proper shower. So you used water out of the tank in a little room and you then had a wash and did your hair and everything else in that little room from the bucket. But they did have one interesting way of dealing with water. If you wanted cold water, well that was pretty near impossible with the temperatures, but it wasn't. What they did was take a terracotta type pot, which was porous, fill it with water, and the evaporation of the water on the outside meant the inside was cooler, and so you ended up with cool water. Now I knew that there were all sorts of parasites in the water, and so I had my own technique of dealing with that. I mean, most people there seemed to be immune to it, but I knew that I wouldn't be, and I had an ultraviolet bottle. So I filled up the bottle with one litre of water, switched on the ultraviolet lamp, which was ultraviolet C, and a few minutes later that water would be safe to drink. So I never did actually catch anything from the water. Since I was working in war zones, we had to accept that we're working in hardship conditions. Fortunately, we were allowed to go somewhere more luxurious. Luxurious? Well, first thing, there's no hot water in the camps. When we went to the bed and breakfast place in Nairobi, there was hot water. But I was always worried whenever I wanted to have a shower with hot water, because the way they did it was to have an electric heater in the shower head. Now, knowing the way things get wired up in some of these countries, I always had the vision of me getting electrocuted in the shower, so I was extremely careful before I went in. Next, we have a way out song by Bjork called Lion Song. Come 
This wild line doesn't fit in this chair Maybe he will come out of this Loving me Maybe And transformed these abstract, complex feelings. I just don't know how to handle them. Should I throw oil on one of these moves? But which one? Which I peak, humor peak, frustration peak. Anything big for clarity Maybe he will come out of this Loving me Maybe
this is rudimental these days featuring jess glynn michael moore and dan kaplan i know you moved on to someone new hope life is beautiful you were the light for me to find my truth i just want to say thank you leaving to find my soul told her i had to go and i know it ain't pretty when our hearts get broke too young to feel this old watching us both turn cold oh i know it ain't pretty when two hearts get broke yeah i know it ain't pretty when two hearts get broke i hope someday we'll sit down together and laugh with each other about these days these days all our troubles we'll lay to rest and we wish we could come back to these days these days people that live in Abu Dhabi. The difference is the people in Dubai don't like the Flintstones and the people in Abu Dhabi do. I know a lot of jokes about unemployed people, but none of them work. What do you call a rooster staring at a salad? Chicken seeds a salad. Why do fish always sing off key? Because you can't tune a fish. The other day, my wife asked me to pass her lipstick, but I accidentally passed her a glue stick. She still isn't talking to me. Once my dog ate all the Scrabble tiles. He kept leaving little messages all around the house. Did you hear about the kidnapping at the school? No, it was fine. He woke up. (laughs) (laughs) Joke of the month at Ipsen. Bring a smile on your face. And now we have a song going back to when I was young and vulnerable. Smokey with Lay Back in the Arms of Someone. Your heart to me You can get 
get whatever you'll ever need You think that's too high for you, baby I would die for you When there's nothing left, you know where I'll be to the art and soul show coming to you from ipsum's basement 13 studio thanks to mike and the gang the show airs on the first tuesday of the month at 10 a.m and of course you can listen on the youtube ipsum website if there are any subjects that you would like us to cover in the program then email us at admin at ipsum.care next up on the art and soul show a poem by john joe just to be near to you, a poem. Because the sun comes up at dawn, because flowers bloom in spring. Because you sit there by my side, I love you from within. No doubt that you're sincere, no doubt about our trust. We love each other purely, simply because we must. One day when we pass over, one day when we are gone, 
we will search then for each other and not be apart for long. The bright sound of your voice, pleasant to my ears. I drift off to a dreamland and forget then all my fears. Safety comes in numbers, the best of which is two. To love and live and linger, just to be near to you. Hi all, this is Rich from Ipsum. Hope you're all good and well. It looks like we're all due to go back out into the world soon after lockdown, and a lot of us have a lot of anxieties and worries about the future. I thought I'd remind everyone how useful meditation and mindfulness is in these times. Let's try stopping for one minute every so often through the day and say this wonderful quote. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. If you would like to join me at Ipsum for meditation, just phone our main number on 01793 695 405 and I hope to see you all soon. Here at the Art and Soul Show at Ipsum, we have a tradition of doing monthly interviews with people, but due to the pandemic and the lockdown, we've not really been able to do that for quite some time. But today we've managed to get round that because we have a member of our Ipsum staff, young Amy, that's with me today, who's come into the studio. We're socially distanced and wearing masks, so if we sound a bit far away, it's because we're wearing masks and recording over Zoom. So we're making this with with Brian, James and John Joe over Zoom. We're going to do this interview with young Amy, who is our media representative here at Ipsum. Without further ado, have you got any questions for Amy? Brian? Yeah, I, I, I would like to know a pretty straightforward question. There are so many different forms of social media. As a novice, what would you suggest to start with? Because Facebook seems to be getting itself an awful reputation for people being scammed, etc. Are any of the others better? Personally, for me, my favourite social media and the most that I've managed to get family members on, even like my nan, is Instagram. And it's really great because I can keep in contact from friends from university, old friends from school, um, anything from work. I follow a lot of mental health pages and even for myself, just looking up things that are funny and humorous. It's great because I can see people in photos and writing. And for me, I have more of a creative outlook on life. And I see the world more in photos. And my Instagram is personally like a scrapbook. And I think that's what's more important to me. I find some social media is a bit bogged down in people's opinions with uh, writing and with all the whole retweeting and Facebook of the way people will go on threads and, and the bullying that can that can happen on those social media. So I try to limit my time on those as much as possible. So yeah, 100% recommend Instagram and you can share any, anything that makes you happy and it, it's more supportive as well. You can sort of build your own community. Thank you for that, Amy. I believe you might have a question for Amy as well, John Joe. Yes. On a similar theme, as an older person, not of the computer generation, we would like to know more about the media culture and how to practice it without looking a fool and being subject to malware. As I mentioned before, I've managed to get my grandparents on uh, social media and um, even my parents, my mum is not, um, not so great with it. I think the best way is one don't don't worry about looking a fool because no one does it's your own personal space and it's what you want and you love and also i um i personally support them so if you've got somebody of the younger generation in your family or even a friend they can certainly help you out with um with social media as for like malware and sort of like the whole hacking you know the media in that way it's kind of it's very difficult because they are getting so smart with some of these emails now um that you can get i had one the other day myself actually that was saying that i had a package from the post office and and it was a complete lie one thing you need to do is look at the email addresses 
most of the time you'll see that they're not from an actual proper place. They're completely made up. You can always Google something if you're not sure. A lot of other people do that and it gets put onto, onto, onto Google that other people have noticed that that's happening as well. And, uh, and you can reach out. And I think that's the thing is reaching out to people you trust if you're not sure about something. Um, so I'd 100% do that. Thank you very much, Amy. And James, do you have a question for Amy? Yeah. When you listen to the news and things like that, you often hear about the negative side of social media and the horrible stuff that happens, you know, bullying and things like that. But what's the positive side? So for me, I shut down quite a few social media accounts because I wanted to promote positive social media. So now I mainly just use Instagram. And the quote I actually have on, because uh, you can have a bio on your Insta Instagram is be the change you wish to see in the world. And I think that's something very important that we should hold valid on social media because it's very influential to everyone, people from a young generation to an older generation, whatever you put out there is on, on the internet. And I think positively, it's, you need to think of it as in real life. You wouldn't surround yourself with those negative people so why do you surround yourself with those negative people on the internet? On the internet, it's easier because you can just block people. And it does still hurt, though, sometimes negative things. I've had I've had some trolling recently on, uh, on the internet myself. And um, it has really hurt and damaged my character. But I held strong. And what I believed in with the friends and people that are positive around me actually got me through everything and made me understand where I needed to be. And for positive social media as well, I mean, follow certain accounts. Um, I follow uh, Mental Health Matters, which is great. I even follow one, I think it's called Cantana Comics. And it's like a boyfriend and girlfriend that are like these little comic people. And it just makes me laugh. It reminds me of like my other half and I, these funny little comics. Um, I also follow Mental Health Swindon. They, they share some positive and empowering quotes um, sometimes that's the, the men's mental health one and I think that's the thing is always surround yourself with good things you would surround yourself with good things in your house in your company with your family and your friends and you should do the same with your social media yeah, that's excellent like you've recommended some great accounts there as well hi Amy maybe you could tell us a little bit about your interesting journey from service user to employee in this difficult terrain of mental health mental health prevention and mental health management yeah sure so um i started as a service user a year ago now back in in january i came in on january 7th it was my dad's 50th birthday and he told me no nope, it's more important for you to go and get some mental health support um i had a breakdown uh, four years ago part of that i stopped talking stopped wanting to do anything or be anything and I was just looking for some help to help me get a bit further. So I contacted Shout, which is a text service, which is fantastic if you're ever needing support. And they suggested to me uh, Ipsum, and they're part of the Hub of Hope, Ipsum. So you can see the mental health services that are in your surrounding areas. So obviously we are in Swindon. Started at Ipsum and um, I did some karaoke singing with Mike which was just amazing and freeing and something I hadn't done for a few years. I also did some art with Sue. And then it all actually happened by accident. I turned up the wrong day for singing and I was sat in the office chatting to Barb about how much I love photography, as that's what I have a degree in. And um, positive social media is something that I'm always wanting to spread, the whole be kind message. And they told me about a job that they had coming up. It was actually for something completely different. It was for an admin role. And then I was talking about uh, what I wanted to do uh, social media wise. And they created a role for me for four hours a week so that I could be reintroduced into going back into work because I hadn't been at work for, for four years. And I was being supported through that and being rehabilitated to get better and such. And then, yeah, I got my job two weeks before the pandemic hit <laughs> and then everybody started to get furloughed and it was a massive learning curve. I went from there with the media 
and kept it going from strength to strength. I'm still learning bits and pieces now with the team and uh, still with I still get supported here as well um, with my own mental health and Mike still lets me sing. So um, it's, it's great. And so that's literally how it happened. All by a very good coincidence and accident, as Mike always told me, it's, uh, what was it you said? Good, good karma and everything just falls into place. And so that's what I feel about being at Epson is my place. Thank you, Amy. That's very encouraging. Thank you very much. When it comes to social media, how do we follow Ipsum? How do we find out more about what Ipsum do? So Ipsum are across a few um, platforms. You can firstly go to Ipsum on the website, which is www.ipsum.care. Um, on there, it has links to all of our social medias. We are on Facebook. We're also on Twitter. It's all um, at Ipsum. You can search for those. The same is on uh, Instagram as well. We have fantastic YouTube where we, during lockdown, we've actually adapted it so that you can see art tutorials and Mike does some music on there. We've got some meditation. Uh, Even this radio show is on there. So that's fantastic that we can still bring a bit of everything from Ipsen to everyone at home. Also, if you are feeling that you need support or someone you know would like support, you can email admin at ipsum.care. Just drop us an email. So one of the team will get back to you. Hopefully, we can help you in some place in Ipsum. That even is with counselling as well. We offer those services that you can just email us about. Yeah, there's something for everyone at Ipsum. And I think that's the thing that I love most about working here, is that it's like having a second home and second family. Thank you so much for that, Amy. That was really informative. Hopefully, we're going to carry on doing these interviews each month now. We've got one of our counsellors planned to come in next month and do a little bit of talking about what you need to do and how to think for going back out into the real world after lockdown, because it's going to be scary for a lot of people that have been at home for a year, and it's going to impact on their mental health going back into, into real life. I know when I came back to work last September after the first lockdown, the first month I was terrified most of the time just being out and about so we're going to have a counsellor come and talk about methods for dealing with that hopefully on next month's interview so look out for that on the Art and Soul show next month. You are the avalanche One world away My make believe in While I'm wide away Just a trick of light Bring me back around again Those wild eyes A psychedelic silhouette I never meant to fall for you But I Was buried underneath And all that I could see was mine My salvation So
Okay, so that was Gabrielle Applin, Salvation, Amy's Choice, here on the Art and Soul Show. Next up on the Art and Soul Show, we have Peace About the Eel Pie Island, made by Brian. I've always been interested in the history of the rock movement. And one of the places that stand out is Eel Pie Island. Well, that's in the Thames near Twickenham. It's a private island and you can only go on there certain days of the week. The island originally had a hotel on it and provided eel pies, amongst other things, for the travellers on the river. But that fell into disrepair and it was taken over and set up as a music venue. They had a huge hall next door to the hotel with a sprung floor, originally used for dances. Which bands played at the Opie Island? It's surprising. Rolling Stones? They did at least 24 gigs during their residency. Now, the Rolling Stones weren't fixed just yet. Uh, For instance, Carlo Little was their drummer, and he was one of the top drummers who never seemed to achieve any fame. He taught Keith Moon how to play the drums, He played with most of the major groups, but never managed to achieve the fame that he deserved. The Who, several times. Yardbirds, different configurations, but they had Jeff Beck and Eric Clapton playing there. The one that was really interesting was Davy Jones. Now, it's not the Davy Jones from the Monkees, or the actor. This was Davy Jones, who changed his name to David Bowie, the man who made a major difference to pop music. Some more of the famous groups that were there, people like the Moody Blues, Nice, the Edgar Broughton Band, Long John Border was another of the famous stars there, and he had in the group Elton John and Rod Stewart, well before they became famous. They were there at Eel Pie Island. Deep Purple, another of the famous groups that played there. Unfortunately, things went wrong because they didn't have the money to pay for licenses. Eventually, Eel Pie Island closed down. I think what I'll do is give you the background to the next incarnation of Eel Pie Island, and that was Colonel Barefoot's Rock Garden. If we take a look at June... On Fridays, he had Wild Angels, next week Free, and final 26th of June was The Amazing Shades, plus Tiny Clanger. On Saturdays, 6th, Edgar Broughton, Little Free Rock, and Ginger Johnson's African Drummers. 13th, Gypsy. 20th, Steve Miller Delivery, and Bone. And 27th of June, East of Eden. That's the sort of music he was providing. But not just the music. There was the free Colonel Barefoot's Killer Punch. Don't know what was in it, but it was a bit of a killer. Very cheap hot snacks, soft drinks, fags, etc. Incredible light show by Oral Plasma and Freaky Sounds and Incense. That was what Colonel Barefoot's Rock Garden offered. And you can imagine, people swarmed in their hundreds. I should really say thousands, because at that time, there were 30,000 members of the Eel Pie Island Club. 30,000. Sadly, health and safety intervened, and they were closed in 1967. Taken over by hippies, and strangely, there was a fire in 1971, and that finished it. In fact, there's now a block of flats where Eel Pie Island used to be. Very sad to lose some of our history. It was on a par with the cavern. That also got knocked down. So I suppose the two major influences on pop music were both destroyed in the name of progress.
Okay, thank you, Brian, for that history of Eel Pie Island, where lots of rock and roll was made back in the day. So that, unfortunately, brings us to the end of the April Art and Soul show here from Ipsum on Swindon 105.5. We look forward to seeing you again next month, the first Tuesday of the month at 10am. Till then, have a great month. All the best for everybody here at Ipsum. Thank you.